Good morning. Welcome to worship with us today. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Madison, Wisconsin. We are delighted for your presence with us today, either here in the sanctuary or by live stream. The liturgy will be projected on the screen, but the bulletin is also available by scanning the QR code found at any of the entrances with your device. Today is the fourth Sunday after Easter, and we experience how Jesus ministered to his followers before his death and resurrection. Let us now enter our time of worship together.
please join in the call to worship. Frayed and frazzled, our lives jangling with tension and anxiety, we gather to find that place of peace which God offers to us, awash in worries and doubts, drowning in a sea of fears. We gather beside the still waters where Jesus offers us a cup of grace. Weakened by the burdens of life, wandering as if lost in a wilderness, we gather so the Spirit can restore our souls and show us the path to the kingdom. God calls us to love one another as God loves us. We know the truth of God's peace when we share God's love with one another. So we offer that peace now with these words. May the peace of God be with us all. We invite you to greet your neighbors with a wave. Let us join our voices together in prayer. Whenever we find ourselves waist deep in stress, you float us on your living waters until we are at peace. As we try to race down every road and alley of endless meetings, you put up a detour sign directing us to your joy. 
Though we try to flee from the very life we are longing to discover, you slow us down until mercy and goodness can catch up with us, so hand in hand we can race to your house where we are welcomed in all the moments to come. Be our shepherd in this life, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's so great to have you here. I'm out in the garden entrance, in the garden entrance gallery, in front of one of the pieces for the Children and Youth Upcycle Art Exhibit. And I'm in front of one of the pieces called Together. And I'm here because this piece right here is really beautiful and you should check it out. Everybody, please come and check it out. You should see it in person. This piece really fits in today's scripture. It really fits in today's lesson. And why is that? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the start of this piece, this beautiful piece, colorful piece, so much creation in this piece. And it all started with a whole bunch of these. Okay, a whole bunch of these. And if you're wondering what I'm holding up, it's a white puzzle piece, just a blank puzzle piece. Because that's what this started with, a blank puzzle piece. So I purchased a floor puzzle, painted a white, and that's what we started with, blank, all right? And then one of our young artists here at First Kong, Henry Flogel, uh, drew a design, painted a design on that. We'll put a picture up of, of that. And that's what it was. And then we took the puzzle pieces all apart and sent individual puzzle pieces to anybody who, any artist who wanted to paint something, any child or youth artist in the church. And, but the thing was, they had no clue what the final project was going to look like. All they got was their puzzle piece. And from that, they really couldn't tell what the big piece was. And then sent it all in together. And they sent the pieces back painted. And we put it back together. And this is what you see. Pretty cool, isn't it? So individual artists had only parts of the big design. Only parts of the big design. And they probably were wondering, maybe you're one of those artists going, I wonder what this is going to be. I wonder what this is going to be. All right? And that ties right into today's scripture. When people were kept asking Jesus, are you the Messiah? Are you this, what, what is this kingdom you're talking about going to look like? Jesus, tell us, what is the big picture? What is the big picture about what you're talking about? And Jesus, I'm sure he had to breathe deeply and try to collect himself and say to them, wait and watch. Because right now you, you aren't going to understand the whole picture of what this kingdom of God is like. You're not, you're not going to understand. So I, what I need you to do is to watch me, Jesus said. Watch me and learn and do as I do. And then over time, you'll start to figure it out. All the pieces will start coming together. And then you'll have a better understanding of the big picture of the kingdom of God. So here we have a valuable lesson of what Jesus was trying to teach us. We all have our individual pieces. And we, sometimes we may not understand how our piece fits into the big picture of God's kingdom. But that's why God sent us Jesus, to watch and learn and do as he did, and to make our peace follow Jesus' example, and then we put all the pieces together and we show the beauty of God's kingdom. Let's pray. Loving and ever so patient God, Thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus to help us to better understand you, one piece at a time. Amen.
All right, don't forget to come in and check out the art. We'll see you next time. Hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, starting at verse 22. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Let us pray. May the words that come from all of our mouths and the meditation that lives deep in all of our hearts always be found as acceptable to our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Forbes magazine gives this advice regarding the importance of being concise in leadership. Communication, both internal and external, is one of the most important factors in business success. A good leader must be able to clearly articulate ideas, goals, and needs in a way that engages and excites an audience. Your interactions with others should always be conducted with purpose, which requires understanding of the concepts of strong communication and practicing these skills regularly. Concise speakers don't pad their sentences with jargon or flowery phrases to sound more professional. They recognize that time is valuable and that it is critical that all parties walking away from a conversation understand the relevance and importance of what was said. I'm fairly certain the Jews gathered around Jesus in our text today didn't have a subscription to Forbes magazine. But what they were asking for was concise language matching their expectations. They wanted to understand who Jesus is and what his capabilities are if he is indeed the Messiah. It's not that Jesus was not concise. It's just not how he is acting. It's how he acts, how he teaches, how he leads is by example and by telling stories he thinks they might understand. But that is not what the followers want. Let's talk a bit about how they expect the Messiah to act. Scholarly work tells us the word Messiah is derived from the Hebrew word Mashiach. In Greek, the word is translated, and in the ancient translation of the Older Testament, as Christos. It means the anointed one. 
Christians are often shocked to learn that this word appears only about 50 times in the entire Older Testament and almost never refers to a Savior or a Redeemer. Messiah in the Older Testament refers rather to three different figures in the life of the people of Israel. The first time the word is encountered in the Older Testament is in the book of Leviticus in chapter 4, where the Messiah is the priest. In that chapter, the role of the priest in offering the sacrifices for sin is described. In the historical books, the Messiah, the anointed one, is the king. In the book of Psalms, where the word Messiah appears a number of times, it refers almost always to a king. Many of the royal Psalms long for a righteous king who will rule according to God's will and thus bring justice and peace. Both priests and kings were anointed with oil when they were consecrated and they became instituted leaders, the priest in the temple and the king in the kingdom. There is a third figure, also referred to as Messiah, who received a different kind of anointing, an anointing by God, not with oil, but rather with the Holy Spirit, and that is a prophet. The common belief of the time was that the Messiah would be a king, much like the kings experienced in the culture of the time. Marvin Sweeney writes, the kings of Israel and Judah were believed to serve as Yahweh's agents to rule the nation. They were expected to observe God's covenants and laws to defend the nation and engage in offensive war when deemed necessary and to rule the people, with justice and righteousness. So the expectation of this Messiah would be to rule people with justice and righteousness. This is what is being demanded from the Jews that are surrounding Jesus in our text today. They want to know, don't keep us in suspense, as some translations read. Tell us, are you the Messiah? Because if you are the Messiah, we have certain expectations of you. And you, Jesus, could clear it all up right here and now. The location in this text is important. It gives a better understanding of why they are pushing Jesus. Karen Wiseman writes, Jesus is walking through Solomon's porch during the Festival of Lights, or Hanukkah. This place is important. It is the porch or portico on the east side of the temple, and it was called the Porch of Judgment. From this location, the king would make his judgments and exercise justice for those who were brought before him. And here is Jesus strolling through the historic location, physically embodying justice in this place of justice, something his life and teachings were all about. These Jews believe Jesus is in this place, Solomon's porch, for a reason. If the Messiah, the king, he needs to start rendering judgments in this place, at this time. But Jesus again does what Jesus so often does. He delivers a a message to the questioners that is totally unexpected. Not in line with what a king would do while on this porch. He doesn't render expected judgments. He renders a judgment of saying, you haven't been listening. You haven't been watching. You haven't been paying attention. And because you have not tuned into what justice really looks like, 
You do not understand the ministry I have been sent to do. Jesus again assures those gathered around him, they only need to know that he is one with God. They need to hear and trust his guidance. Well, let's be honest. Those gathered around him on Solomon's porch are not the only ones who have doubts and want clarity. We, too, are sometimes sheep who have gone astray. Well, at least I can say that for myself. But we have known hard times. We have been afflicted by disease and lost loved ones who have been addicted and known loss, who have not felt protected from loved ones who abuse or belittle them. We have witnessed horrific events. We see bad things happen to good and innocent people, and our doubts creep into our minds. But this is also not the time to walk away with our doubts. This is the time to be even more attentive to the voice of the shepherd, to hear the compassion, love, and grace that is being offered. No, it's not a king wielding judgment upon those who have entered the courtyard. It's a voice of care, of concern, of guidance, and of love. It is a shepherd who offers to walk with us, protect us, and go after us when we are lost. Far different than any understanding of kings of that time. This is the time we need to remind ourselves that in the waters of baptism, we promise to continue to listen to the voice of the shepherd. And we were given promises of grace, of forgiveness, of love, and of community. As we stand on Solomon's porch in the text this morning, what are our expectations? Are we hoping for judgment to be rendered on those who we believe judgment should be rendered? Are we hoping that Jesus will look like a king? Listen to Jesus' words again today. Just as he said them to those gathered on the porch, have compassion, care for your neighbor, because I'm going to do all of that and more for you. You have been created by God to be loved, to be a part of the flock. I do not doubt God's love for me. Please do not doubt my love for you. Is this the leader we expect? We probably have a few people we would like to see a few judgments rendered on today. But how much more concisely do we need to hear this message? In his words on the porch, he reminds us to trust the love he promises. He offers another way to lead. He could have just as well said, just open your eyes. My actions speak much louder than any words. Forbes magazine has it right. Concise language is important and needed in leadership. But leadership also involves actions committed to the values of loving God and neighbor. Amen.
Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, Mother of us all, today we acknowledge the souls we call Mom. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have abortions, we remember you on this day. To those who are single and long to be partnered and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. To the mothers who have lost a child to violence, we cry with you, and God weeps with all of us. This Mother's Day, we walk with mothers of all kinds. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember each of you. We acknowledge both your joy and pain and give thanks that God is present as we experience all emotions. We make space now for silent prayers. Held in the loving arms of God who nurtures us, we join our voices together in our common prayer, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus again compares himself to a shepherd. A shepherd that cares for his sheep, counts on his sheep to recognize his voice, and to respond when God calls his sheep to follow the lead. When we share our gifts, we are promising to follow the lead of the shepherd by loving God and loving neighbor. Gifts can be made via the website, through Realm, by mail, or left in the black boxes near the exits.
we now dedicate our gifts. God of love, you abide with us, provide for us, and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts. Give us your wisdom as we seek to use them to be your work of love and justice, that all may feast at the table of abundance, walk without fear, and drink deeply from the cup of compassion. Amen. Here we are, standing on the porch with Jesus today. What are our expectations? Are we hoping he will render judgment on those we feel need it? Would we doubt his decision-making skills if they didn't match our expectations? Or is this a good reminder that Jesus' actions and ministry look far different than any king? Maybe this is a reminder to us that leadership is about how we live our lives. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>